Hey guys, welcome back. Ivan Blasco is here. So we're going to go ahead and talk about fruit today. Basically, uh, the question is, does fruit make you fat, right? Well, there's a study that I'm going to use to base this video off of, and it's a 2016 study. And the study is titled, The um, Paradoxical Effects of Fruit on Obesity. That's a really awesome title. And we're going to go ahead and look at some of the graphs they have. In fact, in fact this is based off the research. Could not a low fruit consumption could actually make one fatter. Now let's go into that the, the schematic. All right, you guys. So, if as you look here, here are some of the anti-obesity mechanisms of fruit. Okay, um, and you can just see them for yourself right there. It decreases total calorie intake, and this is based on many reasons. Number one, it's it's it has fiber. It it also is uh, very satiating, and that's due to also they tend also fruit is high in water, uh, a lot of fruit for that matter. And you have micronutrients, which also, like I said, nutrient density can help regulate hunger. Then you have other things like non-essential phytochemicals as well as undiscovered mechanisms, which we're going to get into that later. Then the, the modulation of the gut ecology of the gut microbiome. What I want to direct your attention to here, though, is look at, look at the left-hand side, low fruit consumption, right? And you see its relation to, being, to having a high body mass index, being overweight and obese. Whereas on the right-hand side, you see high fruit consumption and you have a lower body mass index and a leaner physique. This has to do with the gut microbiome, feeding the gut bacteria, the friendly bacteria, uh, with, a, with a diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables. All right. So let's come, come back to undiscovered mechanisms. So when we look at this, guys, what comes to mind is Michael Pollan in his um, book, In Defense of Food, in particular, his principle of nutritionism. And it has to do with taking a single nutrient out of context, okay? So what's the single nutrient here? What's the big, it's sugar. That's the main thing that people come to when it comes to fruit, it's high in sugar. Well, guess what? It's not just high in sugar, it's high in a bunch of other things like phytochemicals and so forth. In fact, it's always it, it, the balance of things. In fact, let me just go into this next slide so you can see what I'm talking about here. As you can see here, it's the balance. So you can see the pro-obesity mechanism, of course, some increased simple sugars. But that's taking the sugar away from the food, okay? Um, as can be seen in the right below that, fruits from that are canned, which have added sugars typically in the um, in the liquid, and then you have fruit juice. You're taking the fiber from the fruit and you're just extracting the juice, and then dried fruit. Again, you're taking the water from the fruit, and 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 basically just condensing the calories. So all of those are pro obese mechanisms, no question about it. But look on the left, you have a ton. You have way more anti-obesity mechanisms or fat loss mechanisms for that matter. You have an increased water consumption, increased fiber intake, which is going to obviously increase satiety. Then you have some of the non-essential phytochemicals that I will touch into. Uh, and then you have the gut microbiome transformation, increased bacteroidetes, which is the bony bacteria or the lean gut bacteria, and decreased in firmicutes, which is the fat bacteria. All right, so uh, let's, let's go ahead and move this along. Um, and so what we're going to talk about now is there was a study that found that fruit lowered triglycerides and vegetables did not. Now this is one study. There are probably many others that show vegetables lower triglycerides, but I thought that was interesting to, to point out in that study finding. So, so in a sense, it's not that fruit, you know, the fruit is a food, okay? When you take sugar out of fruit and you add it to things, then it's those type of processed sugars and processed carbohydrates that raise triglycerides and studies have shown that and you can look at the bottom of this video to see those studies uh, but basically um, you know I found some other research showing that when the glycemic load is low which is indicative of a carbohydrate source that's higher in fiber higher in antioxidants and it's not processed you're also going to have lower triglycerides so low glycemic load low triglycerides when the glycemic load increases in other words eating uh, processed carbohydrates or eating too much carbohydrates, like excessive amounts, because too much of anything, right, can, can be problematic. Triglycerides go up. We talk about micronutrients and uh, antioxidants and polyphenols in fruit and how that helps to keep us uh, lean and trim. So basically, um, this kind of goes into the fact that uh, foods that are high in nutrient density tend to help to boost fat loss lots of complex mechanisms that occur in the body. Let me just prove this out, let me bear this, let me bear this point out. First off, fruit contains a ton of antioxidants, right? 
and fruits are also, fruit is like the natu some of the richest sources of vitamin C, where there's research showing that vitamin C is strongly associated with fat loss. In particular, its role in the synthesis or production of L-carnitine, which is a uh, transporter of fat uh, into the cells or mitochondria to be, you know, burned uh, through fat oxidation. I wrote an article on this on bodybuilding.com. You can check out below. Um, and then also, here's the real, real key here. If you go to any supplement store or you look at any fat loss supplements, I would say most, most likely and most of the time, you'll see some fruits, fruit extracts on the back, like blueberry extract, cranberry extract, right? So, you know, there are fat loss benefits to fruit. Um, raspberry ketones, for example, it, it comes from raspberries. You have the grapefruit diet, which is, uh, which is narginin, that, that underlying highlighted um, phytochemical that, that, that I showed in that graph previously, comes in grapefruit. Then you have lychee fruit, which is a staple um, in Asian populations, Asian culture. It's known to boost adiponectin levels. Then you have tamarind, which is basically uh, the supplement hydroxycut. That's, that, that hydroxycut is based off tamarind which contains hydroxy citric acid, which is probably was, was how that name hydroxycut was derived. So, you know, the, 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 the fruit, fruit is, is, is very potent at, at, burn, at helping us burn fat. Now, let me go ahead and show you a graph here to kind of illustrate um, what I'm going to talk about further. All right, here, so here's a nutritarian diet. And if you look at the bottom of the pyramid, vegetables, are the number one food to be consumed and, and most abundantly. Then comes fruits, then comes beans and legumes, then up, to, up there is seeds and nuts and seeds, whole grains and potatoes and so forth, okay? But as you could see, fruits and vegetables are definitely the top food sources to be consumed, no question about it, and then follow that with beans and legumes. But the point here is that there is a little bit of a caveat with fruits. I mean, in, in, it's undeniable that they tend to have a higher sugar content than vegetables, most vegetables for that matter. Um, you have some root vegetables who have higher sugar content, but for the most part, fruit has higher sugar content. And that's one of the pro-obesity um, caveats that's mentioned or possible mechanisms. Now, this is, this is, they didn't state it conclusively. This is just plain devil's advocate, okay? Fruit is very good for us, and I'm not at all suggesting that it isn't or in, re in, re in relation to, you know, body fat and, and fatness, but it's something to definitely ponder a little, and I'm going to go into that pondering right now. So for most people in the general public, we certainly want to encourage fruit consumption. And here's another angle. For those who don't eat a lot of fruit, when I showed you that graph of having low fruit consumption and high body weight, we have to ask ourselves, what are they eating in place of fruit, right? So when we eat fruit, it replaces higher calorie, unhealthier food choices. So that's another benefit of fruit is that it actually it increases our, our quality of nutrition in our diet, and it also helps to kind of crowd out a lot of the uh, you know, poor quality and low, low, low quality calories. Well, let's talk about the caveat, right? So I like how Dr. Furman has vegetables first, and there's a reason for that. Here's the proof of concept. Fruit versus veggie juice. If you drink veggie juice, right? Veggie juice is not associated with um, you know, increase in body fat or body weight, but fruit juice is. And in that study, they show that it is. That's a fascinating proof of concept caveat that I just illustrated, isn't it? Again, I'm just playing a little bit of d devil's advocate to it, but it does illustrate the point that there, there is a little bit of pro-obesity pro element to fruit, um, which is why I have a certain way with how I approach fruit consumption. All right, and I'll show you right here. Again, guys, I eat a lot of fruit, and I eat a lot of I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables for that matter. But when it comes to fruit, I certainly eat sensibly with it. Okay, I eat it abundantly. I eat it daily, but I don't just you know have a buffet with it. I mean, every now and again I may, every now and again. But most of the time, if I'm eating too much fruit, that means I'm not eating eating enough of something else. And that's the point I want to illustrate here is that you know when we when we put our, all our eggs. Pun, no pun intended, in one basket, we tend to miss out on some other things. So if you look here, for those who really want to hone in on the fruit consumption and kind of get a little more precision, um, I have this chart here in my video on the 15% fiber rule. So on my left, those are my, you know, you can call me Yvonne approved fruits, okay? On the right, those are my Yvonne, I guess, restrictive fruits. Not restricted, restrictive. In other words, 
eat these a little and more more prudently or more you know in moderation grapefruit's kind of an exception so is cantaloupe and so is watermelon and grapes so again there's caveats to all these on the right i'm not at all saying don't eat them i'm just saying if it were me and the way I do it, I eat them sensibly. On the left, I eat, I eat those a little more abundantly. I, I can load up on the berries, I can load up on those other, I, you, but you get my point, right? So this kind of get, hones in on a little more precision with fruit. Um, so that's all I want to illustrate with this uh, chart here. And in closing guys, we're gonna leave with two things. Number one, I also want to, um, the first thing I want to close with is that this is a, um, I want to talk about the gut microbiome. So in the study, they said that the incorporation of fruit in the, in the diet drives the gut ecology toward an anti-obese condition by increasing the prevalence of lean-type bacteria, but reducing the um, obese-type bacteria. In, in the end, guys, fruit consumption is definitely not going to make you fat. Even if you overeat it, it will not do it because inherently it, it, it's almost impossible to overeat it because it's going to fill you up too quickly. Um, and also nutrient density and its, a, and, and its inherent regulation on appetite. So... Um, with that, guys, uh, feel free to leave comments below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Um, that was a great study that motivated this video, and those two schematics were very helpful. Um, and it was just, it's, 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 I think it's the first study of its kind, and I think it's phenomenal. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Tune in next time.